Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I am Hashim Ali Khan. So so far we have completed four problems on computation of income from capital gain. In this video, two more problems I am going to explain you. Fifth problem and sixth problem. Before that, I expect my viewers to have a print out of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep it ready. Take the screenshot of the solution of fifth and sixth problem. Then I will explain. Come on, see the fifth problem. Sri Harsha is owning a house and used for residential purpose. The house which was constructed for 1,80,040 years ago. On 16th, uh, on 11th July 1995, he entered into an agreement to sell the house to Mr. Abraham for rupees 8 lakh and received 80,000 as advance. First of all, the SSC Harsha purchased the residential property for 1,80,000. 40 years ago that means before 14 2001 right and uh, on 11th July 1995 uh, Sri Harsha entered into an agreement of sale to Mr. Abraham the sale price was fixed as 8 lakh rupees but received 80,000 as advance Mr. Abraham failed to pay the balance amount and consequently the advance amount is forfeited again Income Tax Act says if the advance amount is forfeited before 1-4-2014 then this advance received forfeited should be deducted from the cost of acquisition. If the amount is forfeited after 1-4-2014 then this advance forfeited is taxable under income from other sources. Already this point I have explained you in the last video. So you have to see whether forfeited amount is before 1-4-2014 or after 1-4-2014. In our problem, this advance were forfeited in 1995. That means before 1-4-2014. So 80,000 rupees will be deducted from cost of acquisition. The house is sold during the previous year for rupees 90 lakh. This is a sale proceed. And the selling expense were 1%. FMB fair market value on 1-4-2001 was 15 lakh. So when an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the SSC can choose higher of the following two. Actual cost or FMV, whichever is higher. The actual cost was 1,80,000 and fair market value on 1-4-2001 is 15 lakh. And the stamp duty value is 14 lakh. See here, Income Tax Act says the stamp, uh, the so FMB, the actual cost and FMB should not exceed the stamp duty value. Here the stamp duty value is 14 lakh, right? 14 lakh is the stamp duty value, whereas the FMB is 15 lakh. 15 lakh. During the previous year, 2002-2003, one more floor is added to the building at a cost of 6 lakh 30,000. This is the cost of improvement. Cost inflation index 105 and during 2008-2009, 3 lakh rupees is spent for renovation and painting. Cost inflation index 137. Any expenditure incurred on renovation and painting should not be considered while calculating income from capital gain. Because Income Tax Act says this renovation and painting is a revenue expenditure. It is not a capital expenditure. So it will not be considered. Calculate the income from capital gain and tax liability if the income from other heads are 1 lakh rupees. Apart from this capital gain, they are having other income of rupees 1 lakh. We have to compute the tax liability. First of all, Sri Harsha. Computation of income from capital gain for the assessment year 21-22. Consideration received 90 lakh. It is given the problem. The house was sold for 90 lakh. Now minus selling expenses, the transfer expenses are given 1%. So 1% 1 of 90 lakh, 90,000. Deduct 90,000, 89 lakh, 10,000 is the net consideration. From this, we have to deduct indexed cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement. 
both we have to get first of all index cost of acquisition now what is the fair market value the fmb is given in the problem as uh, 15 lakh but the stamp duty value is given as 14 lakh the fair market value is given as 15 lakh and stamp duty value is 14 lakh where is it here fmb is 13 lakh 20 thousand and stamp duty value the stamp duty value is 14 lakh 14 lakh right so here the stamp duty value is less than the fair uh, fmb fmb it is given 15 lakh whereas stamp duty value is only 14 lakh so 80000 rupees advance money received 80000 rupees advance money received and forfeited that will be deducted from 14 lakh so 14 lakh minus 80000 is 13 lakh 20000 so we'll take 13 lakh 20000 into 301 by 100 you will get 39 lakh 73200 now indexed cost of improvement so two more rooms are added Improvement is done by incurring ex expenditure of 6 lakh 30,000. So 6 lakh 30,000 into 301 divided by 105. 105 is the uh, index number of the year of improvement. So 1 lakh 80, 18 lakh 6,000. Take the total, it comes to 57 lakh 79,200. This is the total of index cost of acquisition and index cost of improvement. Now direct 89 lakh 10,000 minus 57 lakh 79,200. You are getting long term capital gain 31 lakh 30,800. This is the LTCG on which there is a flat rate of tax of 20%. Now, working note income under other heads are 1 lakh. See here, this LTCG is a special income on which there is this flat rate of tax of 20%. Whereas other incomes are a normal income, the normal income is only 1 lakh. Now the basic exemption limit is 250,000. 250,000. Income Tax Act says if the other income are less than basic exemption limit, then we calculate deficiency. The basic exemption limit is 250,000. Whereas income is only 1 lakh. So 250,000 minus 1 lakh, you will get 1 lakh 50,000 as the deficiency. And this deficiency can be deducted from LTCG and the remaining balance of LTCG is taxed at a flat rate of 20%. So here, this deficiency of 1,50,000 can be deducted from LTCG. How much is the LTCG? 31,30,800. From this deduct 1,50,000. 29,80,800 is the taxable LTCG. Now, Tax from LTCG 20% of 29,80,800, 5,96,160. This is a tax on LTCG, flat rate. To this, we add health and education, says 4%, 23,846. The total 6,20,006. 6. The last two digits you can see 06. We can round it off to the next 10. That is, last 10 rupees will take. 6,20,010 is the rounded off tax liability. That's it. The advance money received and forfeited was before 1 for 2014. So the advance of 80,000 forfeited will be deducted from FMV. 14 lakh minus 80,000 is 13 lakh 20,000. Already we have taken there, right? Huh. Expenses on renovation and painting are not to be considered as it is not a capital expenditure. That's all. This is the end of problem number five. Now I'm coming to problem number six. Srimati Chennamma constructed a building for rupees 5 lakh in the financial year 85-86. That means before 1-4-2001. And 5 lakh rupees is spent for adding one more floor in August 20, uh, August 2001. She sold the building for rupees 45 lakh. During the previous year, stamp duty was 55 lakh. So during the previous year, sale year he sold she sold the building for 45 lakh but at that time the st stamp duty value is 55 lakh so income tax act says the consideration should be higher of the following two 
actual sale consideration received or stamp duty value whichever is higher that is the consideration so 55 lakh rupees is the consideration you can see here Srimati Chennamma computation of income from capital gain for the assessment here consideration received 55 lakh 55 lakh is rupees the stamp duty value which is more than the actual sale value now selling expense of 64,000 deduct 64,000 5436 the net consideration cost inflation index in 2001 2002 is 100 fmb on 14 2001 is 15 lakh whereas stamp duty value is 16 lakh now income tax act says the uh, fmb value the fmb value should not exceed the stamp duty value should not exceed the stamp duty value whichever is less we have to take here Actual FMB is uh, 15 lakh, whereas stamp duty value is 16 lakh. So whichever is less we have to take. The so less is 15 lakh. So I have taken indexed cost of acquisition 15 lakh into 301 by 100, 45 lakh 15,000. This is the indexed cost of acquisition. Now improvement is also there. So during uh, during uh, in August 2001, one more floor was added by incurring an expenditure of 5 lakh rupees so 5 lakh rupees is the additional expenditure incurred improvement so 5 lakh into 301 divided by 100 15 lakh 5000 now add up cost of acquisition plus cost of improvement 60 lakh 20000 is the total deduct 54 lakh 36000 minus 60 lakh 20000 minus 5 lakh 84000 negative you are getting so it's a loss there is no long term capital gain. There is a long term capital loss. 5,84,000 is the loss. Long term capital loss. That's all. Now, the long term capital loss cannot be set off from other incomes. One provision is there in Income Tax Act that long term capital loss cannot be set off from any other income. It can be set off only from long term capital gain. So if a person is having long-term capital gain and long-term capital loss, so it can be set off. Otherwise, this long-term capital loss can be carried forward to the next year. And in the next year, this loss can be set off only from LTCG. Right? So our solution is stopped here. Now, sale consideration received is 45 lakh, where stamp duty value is 55 lakh. Whichever is higher you should take for consideration. For consideration, we should take higher. For cost of acquisition, we should take the lower. So here 55 lakh rupees is the higher. Since stamp duty value is more than the sale value, so the consideration received should be taken as stamp duty value. That's it. Now, FMV on 14-2001 is 15 lakh. Whereas stamp duty value on 14-2001 is 16 lakh. So whichever is lower we should take. So, since FMB is less than stamp duty value, so FMB is the cost of acquisition. 15 lakh is the cost of acquisition. Now, computation of tax liability. Income under other heads are 7 lakh 90 thousand given in the last line. It is asking you to calculate the tax liability. So, here there is no capital gain. There is capital loss. And this capital loss should be carried forward to the next year. Current year income under other heads 7,90,000 slab system. First slab basic exemption limit 2,50,000. Up to 2,50,000 income 2,50,000 nil, no tax. The second slab goes from 2,50,001 to 5 lakh. So 2,50,001 to 5 lakh. 2,50,000 is the income. 5% is the tax. So 5% of 2,50,000, 12,500. The next slab goes from 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakhs, but our income is not going up to 10 lakh. Our income is only 7 lakh 90,000. So we'll take the balance. So 7 lakh 90,000 minus 250 minus 250, you'll get 2 lakh 90,000 is the balance. So 2 lakh 90,000 into 20%, 58,000. Add up 12,500 plus 58,000, 70,500 is the tax on other income. Right? To this we add health and education says 4%, 2820. So finally the tax liability comes to 73,320.
that's it. So in this problem, the only thing you have to remember is for concentration received, we have to take the higher actual sale value or stamp duty value, whichever is higher, that should be taken as consideration received. Here 45 lakh or 55, whichever is higher. Whereas in case of cost of acquisition, we should take the lower fair market value or stamp duty, whichever is lower. So fair, fair market value, stamp duty, whichever is lower, that should be taken as the cost of acquisition, 15 lakh. That's it. So we have completed two more problems. That is fifth and sixth problem. Inshallah in the next video I will start the next problem.